It's interesting because, uh, I mean, from my perspective, um, the amount of time that you've been allowed from the uh, NFB um, has obviously uh, been a positive step. It's obvious. So having having no deadline there has has allowed you guys to produce some yeah. incredible films. Right. Oh yeah. I mean, I want to qualify my earlier statement. <laughs> 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 I'm just skylarking about that, you know, because now in my career it'd be an interesting uh, uh, restriction mm -hmm. on on the process. But if I had that restriction when I did Cat Came Back, it would have been a complete mess. You know, it would have been awful. You know, if I was given two years, no money if I exceeded, you know, two years and a day kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, you need that luxury time uh, at the beginning of, like, when you're starting out, yeah. trying to find your, your rhythm. So, I would just like that discipline now, but... <laughs> now you know what you're doing, but yeah. seriously. Yeah, seriously, yeah. yeah. I think that's part of the role of a producer sometimes is to gauge that, <clears throat> whether a, a director needs the time or whether the time is detrimental. But I would say that, just going back to something that I think it was Cordell who said, um, that now that with the digital world that we can make films um, very cheaply and much more efficiently at home just by drawing something into the computer and it doesn't have to be involve film and, and Oxbury stands and all that kind of thing. Historically, the film board, I think the thing that always stood it apart from uh, much of the rest of the world is the fact that there were so many innovative techniques and a lot of under-camera work, a lot of, um, you know, right from McLaren, um, through people like Caroline Leaf and Ishu Patel and all those people that were trying new things. And those new things, <coughs> I think, could really only be developed in a place like the film board that had the camera stands, the cameras, the, um, the lab, uh, <clears throat> and um, that those resources were really important. It's not the kind of thing that most people can do in their basement, or could do at the time. And so all these techniques were um, uh, literally invented because they had the luxury of time and they had all those resources, and a lot of those techniques have been borrowed um, ever since all over the place, both commercially and by other filmmakers. So I think that's really important. Now, digitally, uh, I think it is a little bit less important to have a place like that, which is kind of sad in a way, because the community mm -hmm. of that building, particularly the one in Montreal, is not so relevant anymore. And also having the, the, the time to develop techniques. But I don't, I don't know, I, I still think it's important, but I think it's, there are times when I think um, finishing something very quickly and um, without a, a too many second looks is, really great too. I like the, the idea of that kind of energy. Uh, in a sense, I'm reminded of uh, how the government funds research and development for right. all kinds of scientific projects and then commercial um, interests are always the benefactor of right, yeah. what we've paid yeah. for, essentially. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Okay, I'm going to move on. I'm going to ask, uh, I'm going to get Richard to, uh, to answer this one first. Uh, it's basically directly directed to you. Uh, your works are considered to be non-narrative experimental films, and your process is pretty non-traditional because you're you're drawing straight onto the film. You're doing scratch film for those who don't know. I'm sure everyone's aware, but for our listeners, uh, how do you find shape or direction in your film, and uh, is it always even really that necessary? Shape or direction in the film? You mean like as far as where ideas come from? Or yeah, like how, how do you, or? do you need a narrative for your film? And do you need a, a construct at all? Or how, how do you begin and end a film? Yeah, um, <laughs> it, each film's a little different that way. Um, uh, a lot of times I have a concept in mind. Uh, maybe pre-visualizing something. It comes definitely from an idea. Uh, where do the ideas come from? Even though they are so experimental like, or non-narrative, I still follow kind of um, uh, their story arc. It's an, uh, maybe an abstract story arc, but there is, to me anyway, definite beginning, middle, endings. There are um, some peaks throughout, things like that, and, and I still am conscious about those um, kind of time and timing structures. But. Uh, and storyboards are, I, I don't often do storyboards, um, but I have some kind of little sketches and doodles that I've worked out, and, um, and I try to leave a lot open for the creative process during the, you know, making the film. Uh, leave some ends open. 
for um, how it's developing. I'm just I'm kind of on the way. 